Assalamu alaikum wa wabarakatuh. Dear viewers, the show, think about it. Today, dear viewers, we're going to be taking a look at a few minor topics which have a major effect on society. Number one, we're going to be taking a look at the development of technology and how this piece of equipment has not only shaped the way we think and the way we act, but has become so much second to nature that we can't live without it. In fact, it dictates what we do every single day. Other than that, we're going to be taking a look at a couple of uh, comments that people have passed on, and I'd like to talk about it because people have asked me for my own opinion on certain interviews that have taken place with leaders. And since I've spoken about leaders in previous shows, and I've spoken about the concept of leadership and management as well, so people do want to take, want to see what my take is on it. So I will be, inshallah, indulging our viewers with that. And then, inshallah, we'll move on to a twist of time, how times have definitely changed, where back in the day when something in front of you that was wrong could actually be said that it was wrong. Today, even if someone bluntly and blatantly tells the world that they're going to be doing wrong, is caught saying this, there are at least a million people behind him or her protecting that person. Whereas when you have one person who is actually telling you the truth, who has a lot of positive points coming out of whatever he or she is saying. We end up taking things out of context just to belittle that person. Dear viewers, today we're going to be talking about the twist of time. We start off with the evolution of media and technology. Firstly, technology plays such a huge role in a human being's life today. And nobody is an exception to this. Maybe some people who are of a generation or two before us who aren't that acquainted with technology might not feel that effect. But for everybody else, this is something that you cannot live without and something that actually dictates what we do whenever we do anything. Technology has shaped our lives so much so that whenever we have free time in our hands, instead of indulging in conversation with people who are around us, real life people, we prefer to or we're addicted to, or we're forced to, take a look at a piece of equipment, which namely is a smartphone, a laptop, a tablet, something of the sort. The first place that we go to is social media. And what do we do when we go there? We want to find out the latest news, some updates, maybe some posts by our friends and family, maybe some posts by different leaders around the world. Nowadays, we live in the age of news, to be honest, not the age of media. The age of me media is a platform for things to come forward. We live in the age of news. That means children who are four or five years old who know how to use a piece of technology actually have some access to news, actually have some access to information, whether it be false or true, depicted inaccurately or accurately. And, mashallah, they have the mind to question it and bring it up every now and then too. As an educator, I've had students aged 14, age 9, aged 11, age 16, coming up to me and talking to me about news articles that they have read. TikToks, TikTok is supposed to be a social media platform. It's where people, you know, present their skills. That's what they say. And they have, you know, if you go on to TikTok, there are a lot of people who do have talent in editing, maybe in music, maybe even have good vocal skills. TikTok is something that also gives off people a lot of news. Things that are happening around the world, atrocities taking place that we've mentioned many times before. Different news articles, different presidents, prime ministers, leaders being interviewed and some phrases or words that they might have said that are put onto the forefront of this social media platform. You have the likes of Twitter, you have the likes of Instagram, so on and so forth. You have all these different platforms where kids today have an access to all forms of information. There was a time when the internet was a new phenomenon, <clears throat> especially um, before the turn of the 21st century, in the 1990s, and even in the early 21st century, it was a place where people could go and learn a lot and get a lot of information because there was a time when even the likes of Wikipedia which today can be edited and amended by questionable sources, to say the least. It was something that was backtracked and checked and authentic information was put on. Or different points of views were shared. So people who used to go on to the internet back in the day when it was still a new phenomenon, it was an actual area or an aspect of life where people could actually learn more. 
they could broaden their horizons and mind and thought. Today, is that the case? Today, when people go onto social media, are they getting valid news? Are they getting accurate news? Are they having something to introspect about in a healthy manner, rather than being dictated to and told a certain point of view, and then in an implicit manner told to accept that point of view? Now, quite easily and quite bluntly said, Social media is a platform where you have people who use things out of context and they try to promote things in context. Nevertheless, with all of these things being said about how questionable social media might be or might not be, it is something that everybody resorts to. It's something that everybody turns to. Very rarely will you find someone who doesn't use social media. Quite rarely would you find someone who doesn't have a Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, TikTok, or WhatsApp account. It's very rare. I'm pretty sure that everybody who has access to the internet, which might be whatever percentage of the world, but all those who do have access to it, especially through their mobile phones, have accounts in different social media platforms. The downside of this, or something that people should introspect, my opinion of it is not that high, to be honest, is that it has taken away from initiative and actual thought that we as human beings do genuinely have, what we might call innovation. When you're sitting freely, you have some time on your hands and you're sitting with your family, you're thinking about your ambitions, you have some skills inside you, you have a good head over your shoulders, you're thinking about the world. There are a lot of thoughts that come to your mind, there are a lot of initiatives that your mind comes up with some ideas. Whether you pursue them or not is a different story. But all of these little moments and pieces of time that could be utilized for you, yourself, and your own education by yourself, with people around you, real people, it is now substituted and compromised to the eyes of technology. And to be blunt, social media. So what we have become is we've become an age of reactors. Reactor basically means that you don't have genuine thoughts anymore. At least as not as much as they used to be in the past. Nowadays, half of the thoughts that we do have, every single show that you might turn on, whatever channel it may be on, whatever broadcast it might come through, whatever platform you might be looking at, any show at, it's usually related to a certain topic, a certain news that's taking place over the world, and then we're expected to react to it in a certain manner. We're not asked to think about things. In fact, with this, with this, I'll move on to the second point. Recently, there was an interview of an Islamic leader by the name of Imran Khan. He's the Prime Minister of Pakistan. In previous shows, I have mentioned that he has shown qualities and signs of being a true leader. Now, as much as people might argue against it or for it, I'm not here to tell you that you're opinion of him is wrong or right. I'm not here to justify any of that. You're entitled to your own opinion. That is why we're two different people. That is why we are all different people. Human beings in general have the ability, capacity and will to think differently. The problem is, is that because of social media, because of reinforcement of a variety of ideas, because of reinforcement implicitly or explicitly, we have become beings that see disagreement as an argument, as someone who's against you. Let's say, for example, I am of Pakistan. My origins are of Pakistan. Let's say I were to be sitting within a gathering of people who are from Pakistan. Some of them might have political affiliation, some of them may not. If they were to ask me a question on my beliefs, my views, and my thoughts on a current situation or an affair that's happening in Pakistan, or of what the leader of Pakistan is thinking at that time, Whatever I might say, and if it's not really aligned with their opinion, it doesn't necessarily mean I'm against that person. Neither does it mean that I'm here to argue with that person. Maybe this difference of opinion can educate both parties. Unfortunately, because of social media, one thing that has happened is that instantaneous things have become acceptable. People have become accustomed to things that happen instantaneously. 
You order something off Amazon, it arrives the next day. You want to watch a show, you go to Netflix, you go to Disney Plus, you go to YouTube and you watch whatever you want to within minutes. You don't have to wait anymore for TV guides or the scheduled programming of a channel or of a show or whatever it might be like we used to when we were younger. So because of this instantaneous environment, what's ended up happening is that when somebody says something to you, the immediate thought is that, do you agree with me or not? So it's not just instantaneous things, but it's you have to be on the same page as I am, because if you're not, then we're enemies. That's not true at all. Now, we talk about atrocities taking place in this world. I've mentioned quite bluntly and quite aggressively about my feelings that are happening across the world related to Semites, related to Arabs, Jews, Muslims, Christians all over the world. I've talked about the indigenous population of Canada. I've talked about all these different things. At the end of the day, I have a small prayer, and that is may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide everyone to the right path. For me being a Muslim, that is one dua, one prayer that I can make for people and hope to see a better tomorrow. Now, as bleak as it might sound to some people and as, I don't know, naive as it might sound to some people, the truth is we all do pray and the truth is that we all do have a mind to see things. With that, Benjamin Netanyahu, I've never been able to pronounce his name correctly because I've read it as Ben Yamin as well, or Ben Yamin. He has blatantly on the media said that he wants to crush Palestinians. He wants to bomb them until they cannot even move. He wants to get rid and eradicate their new generations and people to come so there are no Palestinians later on. He has mentioned that there's no need of a two-state solution because there is no such thing as a two-state solution. He's mentioned how Palestinians already regard themselves as Jordanian. So why are people mixing and matching? Why are they trying to take Israel apart? I mean, you know, a part of Israel, according to his perspective. Even though, theoretically speaking, and by the laws of every single international court and criminal court going on, we already know that Israel is breaking international law, defiling every single law and act by the atrocities that are committed. However, on this aspect, you have people of all forms, all sizes, all backgrounds there to support Benjamin Netanyahu, talking about his perspective and how what he said meant this and that and that and this, even though his blatant words are quite clear. Within context, sitting down myself, watching an interview worth an hour, two hours, half an hour, looking at things from beginning to end to make sure that I don't miss anything and I don't prejudge someone. And you still have people there at his defense. So let's take a look at the very recent interview of Prime Minister Imran Khan by a man named Jonathan Swan. Jonathan Swan is an Australian reporter who is of Jewish background. He believes in Judaism, he is a Jew. And he was told to go to Pakistan and interview Prime Minister Imran Khan to find out whether or not Pakistan will be providing them airspace or military bases so they can conduct counter-terrorism or cross-counter-terrorism, whatever label they want to put on it, operations in Afghanistan. Now, this is the entire tone of the interview, and that was the main aspect of the interview. Now, Prime Minister Imran Khan, being a leader of his country, being a person who, whose jurisdiction is Pakistan in its entirety, made a very clear statement saying that there's no base that's going to be given to the Americans, to the CIA, or any form of militants to use in Pakistan. A very beautiful, beautiful sentence that he says that we will not be a partner in conflict. We will only be a partner in peace. This is something that from a neutral perspective, regardless of where you're from, regardless of where you stand, regardless of who you are, regardless of what you believe in, the moment you hear this statement, take away the author for a second. We will not be a party to conflict. We will only be a party or a partner to peace. This is a very, very, very beautiful statement to make. It's the right statement to make. It's a statement that a logical person would make. It's a statement that someone with empathy would make. It's a statement that someone who knows that even if wrongdoings are taking place, there are innocent people who will be caught up within crossfire. And that is something that cannot be afforded. Especially when you take a look at all of the funding that the US has done for their fight against terrorism, so-called terrorism, or whatever label people want to put on it, in Afghanistan, in Iraq, 
billions and trillions of dollars have been put down there with still no verdict, no peace solution, nothing at all. And so Prime Minister Imran Khan made it very clear that there is no military solution. If there is any solution, it's going to be happening through peace talks. Now this is a leader, his point of view, he's mentioned it very clearly. He's an elected official, he sits in an office. Even if people don't respect him, there are many who do. Even if he has haters out there, he has well-wishers as well. Let the man do his job. Frankly speaking, if there was any other leader sitting in his place, whether it was the previous leader known as Nawaz Sharif, the previous one before that, known as Asif Ali Zardari, or the ones who came before him, how would they have reacted to his situation? In fact, if you take a look at drone strikes that have happened over Pakistani airspace and into Afghani areas as well, you will note that in Imran Khan's time, this is not me telling you that I'm a well-wisher, I'm a person who supports Imran Khan, this is a person who is absolutely neutral, who believes in humanity. Zero drone attacks have happened, which goes to show you something right has happened. Give the man some room to breathe, give the man some room to implement what he has thought, his visions. Not every human is perfect, they make mistakes, not every human has the best past, but guess what? You grow up. If you judge today someone who did something 24 hours ago and has made Toba for it, you're doing something wrong. Then how can you judge someone for something they did 24 years ago? And so to this, this was the tone of that interview, and this is what I understood from it. Because that journalist, that reporter, who by the way, I've mentioned this before about Shah Mahmood Qureshi's interview in Washington DC right after his statement within the United Nations Security Council, to that which a lady who I'm not sure of and I don't want to know if, I don't really want to be sure of either, who came up with a few statements and started using her own opinions within her conversation with Shah Mahmood Qureshi. First off, a reporter is a person whose job is merely to get information and express it. Not to be someone who has their own opinions. If you have your own opinions, you are no longer a reporter. You yourself are a speaker. And if you want to be a speaker, you should have sufficient knowledge and understanding of what's been going on. With more on this topic, inshallah, we'll come back after the break. Stay tuned and think about it. Pakistan ka sabse mashhoor. Extra long grain Mughal Basmati rice available in both white and silver. Home delivery is available, subject to minimum order and radius. Also available at your neighborhood fresh code. Mazid Malumat ke liye, aaj hi contact kare 514-6630-480 per ya order kare hamare Facebook se. Banai ye Ramazan aur bhi khas Mughal Basmati ke saath. The premium choice for premium taste. Do Hazar Beast Ka Lajabad offer Jahaham zero percent financing per Aapki Man Pasand Kar de Rehe hai. Free winter tires or Sathi Ham Muft oil change bhi de Rehe hai. Wo bhi Umr Bhar Kelie Abhi Ay or Is Lajabad offer Ka Lutfle Jaldi Kare. आपका खुशामदीद हमारे आउटलेट में जो कि 60 क्विंट्स प्ले ड्राइव एट इंटरसेक्शन क्लोज टू हाईवे 27 एंड रेक्सडेल ऑपोजिट टू वुडबैंड रेस ट्रैक जल्द से जल्द इस ऑफर का लुत्फ लें आज ही कॉल करें सुनील अग्रवाल को 647-703-0218 KK Travel Believe in providing everyone the first class customer service We take care not only for your etiquette but dignity and respect as well. We are available for you anytime on WhatsApp, even while you are in Pakistan or any other destination. KK Travels guarantee lowest prices and are open to price match any airline. We are KK Travels under supervision of Kars Khan at 905-367-9433 or visit www.kaskhantravels.com. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Welcome back to the show. Think about it. We left off talking about some very important points about the development of technology and its impact on every single human being, especially who has access to technology, access to the internet, access to social media. We talked about leaders and how what they say and what they do 
And then we talked about haters and well-wishers. So I'm going to get more into this point. For those of you who still haven't gone the gist of where I'm going. So an interview took place with Prime Minister Man Khan and a reporter by the name of Jonathan Swan. A person who studied in Sydney Grammar School, a person who graduated within journalism, a person who's been a journalist for quite some time, who is a reporter. I left off talking about how a reporter's job is to make sure, and the only job that they have, is they have a set of questions that the state or whoever they work for has asked, and then what they're supposed to be doing is going and asking those questions to a relevant source, a person who is highly qualified within that field, getting the information and expressing it to the public. And once that happens, you understand where a certain leader, where a certain country, where a certain ideology, where a certain party, where politics stands. So my looking and view of that interview was basically about airspaces within Pakistan and the fact that Prime Minister Imran Khan had denied any form of intervention from foreign entities within Pakistan to conduct any form of counter-terrorism, cross-counter-terrorism, the label that they use as true or as false as that might be. And he mentioned that we're going to be a party to peace, not a party to conflict, which is a beautiful statement for any leader to make, any leader whatsoever. Even if Donald Trump had made that statement in his office, I would have praised him for it. If Benjamin Netanyahu had made that statement, I would praise him for it. So that statement itself is where it stands. Now the practice and the practicum of people down there, you have people such as Benjamin Netanyahu and what I just said might not have sat well with a lot of our viewers. When you say something, you're measured by it. But then you're also measured by your action plan and your actual facade. Benjamin Netanyahu has mentioned that the Palestinians and in particular Hamas the group that he talks about a lot, which I believe is an old story, which everybody knows is an old story, which doesn't really exist that much because they're just used as excuses to bomb civilians and homes in Palestine. According to several interviews and several snapshots that Benjamin Netanyahu has been caught saying, with full context, hour-long videos, 15 minutes long, sitting in the confine of his own home or office with children sitting next to him talking about bombing the Palestinians, killing them, it doesn't matter, America can't do anything about it, we own America, we have lobbies there, we can pressurize them, it's our time to put down a world order in front of things. So, these are all things that are said and done. For that, you can easily tell that whatever Benjamin Netanyahu says is pretty much trash, for the lack of a better word. He also said, that Hamas and other people, these terrorist organizations, according to his words, take people who kill others and name streets after them. And we don't do that. I'm going to take a word from Mahdi Hassan. I'm pretty sure all of you know who Mahdi is. He's a pretty decent speaker from the UK. He mentions the Ole Hagardom. The Ole Hagardom were people who, in the mid-1990s, were a terrorist organization of Jewish descent and Jewish belief. There were people who went out and created groups to attack, kill, and murder Arabs and British officials within the land of Palestine. These people were caught, tried, and even by Jewish courts were deemed terrorists. Today, the name Ole Hagardom is a several, was found in several streets named Ole Hagardom Street in several cities across the Jewish state that today exists due to apartheid and due to oppression. So these are contradictions. As far as Imran Khan is considered, I don't see any contradictions yet. You might want to bring up his past. Well, easily other people can bring up your past too. They can bring up my own as well. The past doesn't depict or judge your future. Your niya, your intentions do. What you're actually doing to make amends does. All of those people who are Muslims out there, I'm pretty sure they've heard of the story of the man who killed 99 people. And then he sought out to see if he would be forgiven. And when he reached a person who was known to be a clergy, an imam or a sheikh or someone of the sort, and he said that, will God forgive me? Will Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive me? And that man quickly replied, no. The person who had murdered 99 people ended up making another murder to get to a century and had killed 100 people still trying to seek forgiveness and trying to find out if God will ever forgive him. He left the city. I'm pretty sure most of you have heard the story. It comes down in many different references. So on his way, he finds out that he can be forgiven and he's told to leave 
the city where he's from because that city has a lot of violence, vulgarity and different things and if he stays there he might commit more crimes. So he should move to another place which is much better for him. And on his way, on the way, he dies. And when angels come down, there's a debate that goes on, there's an argument that goes on whether this person should be taken to heaven or hell. I'm pretty sure all of you know that the end verdict was that that person was taken to heaven because of his intention, because of him trying to seek Toba, because of him trying to make amends to his life. So today, if you judge somebody by their past, I'm very sorry, but that is a very naive argument to make. It's a very naive statement to make, and it's a very naive position to have. And by this, by this, so this is what the interview was about. Everything else that happened in the interview was because Jonathan wasn't having his way. When he found out the airspace won't be provided to the CIA or to the US forces, his eyes moved, he had a shock, he had a little bit of a malfunction saying seriously. So yes, seriously. Apparently it's unfortunate that some countries feel that everyone should see things according to their view. Their opinion is the penultimate opinion and if you don't have that opinion you're against them or you're their enemy. Jonathan, wake up buddy, don't be a male Karen. Take the information, express it onto people. That's all. Exeom was paying you as a reporter. If they had a previous agenda to tease the Prime Minister of Pakistan, you got a taste of your own medicine. When Jonathan even asked about veils and the concept of parda, which means modesty and veils, obviously we're told in Islam that men are supposed to restrain themselves and lower their gaze and have control over their feelings and urgencies because men are not robots and that's exactly what the Prime Minister had said. Similarly, it's the same thing with women. In any religious scripture that you pick up, not only just the Islamic ones, pick up the Christian ones from the Old Testament, all right, the actual books that they've had, pick up the Judaic scriptures around, pick up the Bhagavad Gita for the love of God, pick up, you know, all the, the Vedas, pick them up as well for Hinduism. When it talks about male and female modesty, it talks about clothing, it talks about, you know, being modest in the sense of your clothing and how clothing is something that is developed into becoming utmost and whole. What that actually means when Adam and Eve came down, this is something that I mentioned in a previous show, is that when they were bare, they used leaves to cover them up. And with the graduation of time, if you take a look at those people who regard high in society, let's take a look at Christian society, you take a look at nuns, you take a look at priests. What are their attires? What are their clothings? Are they half or bare or naked? They've got their necks covered up, even their hairs covered up, but there's nothing wrong there, is there? Oh, they're following religion then why is it that people have a double standard when they take a look at Islam? Why is it that all of a sudden your knowledge, your f the fact that you pride yourself on being educated goes down the drain when you take a look at Islam? If a man gives you one example and says that men are not robots and women should guard their modesty, yes, it's an unsaid truth that men should guard them too. But does that give women the green light that all the people have complaints about? to go off wearing whatever they please that might be provocative in nature as well? If today in your homes, your daughters do not wear appropriate clothes and want to go out, would you let them? We look at this in movies. Half of us have grown up watching Hollywood movies. You see stories in places where a father comes home and a girl's about to go out to a prom or a party and she's dressed very absurdly. And then the father says, go and change. You're not going out like that. What is this? This is an act of modesty because any point of provocation might exist. You are human beings. Yes, you're supposed to guard your veils, but even guarding yourself while you have temptations around you is a difficult act. And being from a Muslim country such as Pakistan, where people should be following Islamic scriptures, Islamic law, Islamic rules, and basic sin and modest you should be. So it goes both ways. So this man, prime minister, a leader of a country, his statement is taken out of context about men being robots and I don't know what else people are using against him right now, and they're all talking about his past and talking about how dare he do this, I suggest people wake up and reflect on what they're doing. And I say this to myself as well as a human being. Firstly, you don't curse your leaders or make fun of them in open gatherings or closed doors. It's not right to do so. In fact, it's not even Islamic or ethical to do so. It's against the essence of Islam to do so. What you do is you talk about what better men you could become. Even if you do have a complaint, talk about what you could do in your capacity to make things right. I'm a speaker, I'm not a reporter, I'm not a journalist, I'm a researcher. 
I'm somebody who does research and brings it forward and tries to use as much time as I am given to get that message across. So we do research, do research. Read, whether it be for five minutes or 10, read. Just try to understand yourself a bit better before you go off judging others. Try to understand what you would do in the same situation instead of going off and judging other people. Because the biggest problem within the development of technology, within this instantaneous and fast-paced world, and within the world where there are no original thoughts anymore, and we're all just reacting to things, all of a sudden we have a list of complaints, but we don't know how to solve them. Dear viewers, ladies and gentlemen, look, you vote for your MPs, you vote for your prime ministers, you vote for your presidents, depending on what country you're in, you vote for your governors or their appointed, whatever the case is. Yes, they do have a task in their hands, and yes, God will ask them what they did in their position. But God will also ask you what you did in yours, as He will ask me what I did in mine. So you take your capacity to do whatever you can within your capacity to get rid of those complaints. If you feel like you could do something better for Pakistan, social media is in abundance. Go on to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of the National Assembly website of Pakistan. I went on to it. I took a look at the email of the Prime Minister's office. I sent emails as well. And guess what? I got replies. I got replies. Go ahead and do that. Sitting in four walls and talking about things that you believe in and what might be right and what might be wrong, either it's going to just shoot your blood pressure up high or either you're going to be really happy that you showed somebody else who was boss and you got them down in an argument and might help you sleep well at night, but there's no actual solution that's coming out of it. We need to be able to have a situation where we can introspect and grow. Imagine today, we talk about the atrocities happening in Israel, and we talk about the atrocities that they're doing and they're committing every single day. The fact that the new government that was formed violated the ceasefire, started bombing homes in Gaza again, and started to do God knows what. They put garbage and trash and sewage all over Masjid al-Aqsa. Nobody's talking about that, unfortunately. But everybody's standing up to take another leader's words out of context just to belittle him. Just think about it. Whether you think you did right or wrong, I'm not here to judge or I'm not here to tell you if you did right or wrong. For me, that's a naive approach and that's a naive stand to have. Be better versions of yourselves. Do something in your capacities because in this materialistic world, we know what's happening in Palestine. We know what's happening in Kashmir. We know what's happening with Uyghur Muslims. We know what's happening in Pakistan. We know what's happening in India. We know what the COVID pandemic has done. We know the issues that people are facing that they don't talk about just to keep face. We know issues that people are facing and they might even exaggerate to times. We know what's happening. The world is very open. I don't have to stand here and spell it out for you. You guys are people who have all forms of media, all forms of information in the palm of your hands. So for the love of God, read, understand, and try to move forward in life. This materialistic world has us running over. We, we look at all these issues happening, but we're arguing about what house we want to buy and the fact that it has a nine foot ceiling or not, and the fact that the housing market in Canada, or especially in Ontario, is going crazy in the GTA, so why don't I just sell my house and make a couple of, you know, 100, 200, 400,000 grand and buy a new house and do this. We're so materialistically involved that we don't give time to human aspects of our lives. We need to be able to integrate better. We need to be able to talk better. We need to be able to sit down and have a conversation about things and think genuinely from our own hearts and minds instead of being dictated to. Because it's very unfortunate that if you have somebody that you look up to and you think is a leader, that's great. But if you can't hear a single word against that person, there's something wrong. People can be right. People can be wrong. You need to step up and educate yourself. So with so, much thing, so many things happening blatantly, instead of taking people's words out of context and belittling them, look at people who've actually said something in context and see where the world is heading. Make an actual move. Call your MPs. Tell them what the problems are that you're facing within your constituency, within your lives. Try to be heard. Go out. Make amends. Meet people of different races and ethnicities. Talk to them integrate with one another, build bonds, understand one another better. That is how respect is going to grow. That is how the issues will be solved.
Because at the end of the day, we're not partners in conflict. We are partners in peace. Think about it. Thank you for tuning in. And shall see you next time. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.